Good evening, I'm John Carter. Welcome to Poland Daily. Polish authorities expelled four diplomats who were deemed persona non grata in the fallout of the recent Salisbury attack. More than a dozen other countries have announced similar decisions. This decision was forwarded to the ambassador of the Russian Federation, Mr. Sergei Andreev, at 12. The decision was made in consultation with other institutions of the Republic, first and foremost with the Chancellery of the Prime Minister of Poland, as well as the Prime Minister himself and his foreign partners. Employees of the Russian embassy must vacate Poland before midnight, April 3rd. Minister Chaputowicz said that this decision is a sign of solidarity with Great Britain. Great Britain has become the recipient of an unprecedented attack, namely the first deliberate use of a chemical weapon on civilians in Europe since the end of World War II. Other European Union countries have also decided to expel Russian diplomats from their respective countries after the chemical attack on Great Britain and the homicide attempt of Sergei Skripal and his daughter. In the strongest possible terms, the recent attack in Salisbury. The European Council agreed with the United Kingdom government's assessment that it is highly likely that the Russian Federation is responsible and that there is no plausible alternative explanation. Besides the European Union, Ukraine, Canada and the United States have also announced that they will expel Russian diplomats from their respective countries. The international media have recently focused their attention on the attempted murder of Sergei Skripal. However, the British police have announced that they are now also investigating the murder of Nikolai Glushkov. The murder attempt with the use of a nerve agent on Skripal is reminiscent of the 2006 assassination of Alexander Litvinenko. Litvinenko died a slow death after being served radioactive tea by Russian assassins. Nikolai Glushkov was found dead on March 13th. Initially, it seemed like he had committed suicide, but the autopsy revealed that he was already dead before the noose was placed around his neck. Nikolai Glushkov's murder appears similar to the death of his friend, the oligarch Boris Berezovsky. He was also found hanging in his home. The British police have not been able to establish whether it was suicide or murder. Berezovsky was instrumental in the appointment of Vladimir Putin as Yeltsin's successor, but they later fell out and Berezovsky escaped to Great Britain. Putin's first election campaign was financed via the embezzlement of the state-controlled airline Aeroflot. The company's deputy director at the time was the now-murdered Nikolai Glushkov. After attempting to stop the embezzlement perpetrated by the intelligence service, Glushkov was arrested. A year later, he was kidnapped from a hospital by Andrei Lugovoy, the same man who in 2006 gave radioactive tea to Alexander Litvinenko. The British police have revealed that the forensic investigation in Glushkov's home is continuing, but so far there is no evidence of forced entry. Earlier this week, Yuri Felshinsky, the co-author of the book Blowing Up Russia with Alexander Litvinenko, visited Poland and was interviewed about Russian state-ordered assassinations. Yeah, that's, that's why they are using poisoning, because it's very, very difficult to prove. Oh, but listen, this is not the first... Uh, I, I could... Uh, should name you two, two more cases. Uh, one is probably well known to you because this is uh, the case of Richard Kuklinski, who is a Polish colonel uh, who was working for, for the United States until 81, who, who defected to the United States together with his family. And then, of course, two of his sons died uh, under let's say, questionable circumstances. As a consequence of the recent events, the British Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, has ordered an investigation into 14 deaths where Russian state involvement is suspected. President of Poland, Andrzej Duda, visited Polish soldiers in Afghanistan today, along with the Minister of National Defence, Mariusz Błaszczak, and other government officials. 
Soldiers of the Polish military contingent are a part of the NATO Resolute Support Mission. The main objective of the mission is to train and educate the Afghan army so it can maintain peace in the country. President Duda visited the Polish military base in order to show his gratitude to the soldiers' service and to award state medals to some of them. During his stay in Afghanistan, he also met with the Afghan Prime Minister, Abula Abula, and the commander of the Resolute Support Operation, General John W. Nicholson Jr. The President of Poland declared that 50 more Polish soldiers will join the contingent before the end of the year. There are currently 198 Poles taking part in the mission. Although the NATO troops focus solely on training the local army, their mission is still a very dangerous one, said the Polish president. However, he stressed the importance of bringing stabilization to Middle Eastern countries. The former president of Catalonia, Charles Puigdemont, has been detained on a European arrest warrant in Germany. The separatist leader has been living in exile in Belgium since the Spanish government imposed direct rule on Catalonia. On the 30th of October 2017, charges of rebellion and sedition were brought against Puigdemont and other Catalan leaders. Once again, riots broke out on the streets of Barcelona after the announcement of Puigdemont's arrest. The referendum, which preceded the Catalan declaration, was met with a level of violence from the Madrid police against voters that has not been seen for decades in the EU. An extradition of Pigemont to Spain, followed by a prison sentence, would most likely cause the streets of Barcelona to erupt in violence again. No, I don't think that Pigemont will be extradited. We are facing an unusual situation here, and therefore, we, the experts, don't have experience in this matter. But in any case, the ruling on the European arrest warrant should not differ whether it is delivered in Brussels or Germany. There will first be a procedure with precautionary measures. We will see whether he remains in police custody or if he will be released with an obligation to appear in court. The German government argues that the rule of law is not under threat in Madrid and that the issue should be settled in Spain. The case is being handled in accordance with German law and the provisions of European arrest warrants. Therefore, the case is in the hands of the regional authorities of Schleswig-Holstein. Spain is a democratic state following the rule of law, and it remains the German government's conviction that the Catalonia conflict must be resolved within the Spanish legal and constitutional framework. The European Commission has not initiated a process against the Spanish government after it ordered the police to violently attack peaceful voters during the Catalan referendum. Instead, the Commission has chosen to threaten Poland with sanctions for allegedly breaching the rule of law. It appears that Brussels believes that it can treat member states differently depending on which side of the Iron Curtain they were located before 1989. Thank you for joining us. I'm John Carter. Poland Daily returns same time tomorrow. Good night.